Hey everyone, Ryan here, Avatar Productions, with my review of the highly anticipated UCS Luke Skywalker's Landspeeder. Given set number 75341 with 1,890 pieces, 18 plus obviously, an adult set. This one will set you back $200 in the US, fits right in that $200 May 4th range that has been pretty good for the last almost decade at this point. So this one fits right in there, very big fan of the UCS line obviously. And I think this is one that while it's going to get some flack for existing, needed to exist and probably should have existed like five years ago but finally in 2022 they've gotten around to it got our side box art it says UCS and then on the very back it's just a different angle of the land speeder shows the two figures you're getting an exclusive C-3PO we'll talk a bit about that we got some movie stills the dimensions and some actual physical Lego model stills so let's open it up so we got our instruction manual and sticker sheet and then all of the pieces, some of which fell off. Now something they've done here is actually put the windshield in its own bag, which is really good because these pieces can get really scratched up if you don't do this. So this is kind of a newer thing for, for Lego in general. And hopefully it's something that continues because like this, this just needs to be a mainstay. Like you're paying $200 for this. I better not get a scratched up windshield. And then as far as the instructions go, there's just one thing I wanted to highlight here. It says at the very front, introduced by popular demand. And uh, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things that are getting real popular demand and a UCS Luke's Landspeeder, while certainly there was a demand for it. I don't know. I just feel like that's not exactly accurate, but I, I think this is going to be a fine set. It's going to sell well. People are going to like it. I just, I don't know, man. That seems like a statement that would go at the beginning of the UCS gunship uh, instruction manual, not UCS Luke's Landspeeder. So read into that however you like. The first minifigure in the set is perhaps the least surprising inclusion in any set ever. In Luke's Landspeeder, you have farm boy Luke Skywalker a favorite of the Lego Star Wars designers to include in sets makes his return for the millionth time. We've got the blue lightsaber, we've got the binoculars, and just a generally well-rounded Luke Skywalker minifigure. Nothing necessarily bad to say about it. He does have a second angrier face, although I don't think it adds much here for a UCS set that's going to be on display. Something that does add value though here is this C-3PO minifigure. Essentially when the UCS gunship came out in mid to late 2021, the Star Wars designers foolishly came out and said that they don't want to include exclusive minifigures in expensive sets. And unsurprisingly, this left many feeling not great about their decisions to spend lots of money on Lego products when they felt like, you know, if you're going to spend extra money, you should be getting the cooler thing. And that's basically how Lego and Lego Star Wars has worked for the last 22 years until they all of a sudden during the fan vote set with the most amount of people on the internet invested decided that they didn't want to include any cool minifigures in the set. And so of course many people, uh, myself included, were very upset about this. I made a video about it personally that got over 350,000 views and I very much think that that directly led to them very quickly flip-flopping on this because, you know, obviously a very important thing. They had the senior marketing manager guy or something come out and say, hey, uh, so apparently you guys want uh, cool things for your money. So with the Luke's land speeder, we actually included something cool for your money. And like, it, honestly, it shocked me that they that they actually said something about it. They usually don't say anything. So that was a nice surprise. But this is the best C-3PO minifigure you can buy as of now, uh, other than maybe the gold one. But this has the most detail that we've ever had on a C-3PO figure, and it's got the dual molded leg, which is something that the cheaper version doesn't have. It just has a little print of silver on the leg. So this is definitely a step above the cheaper versions of C-3PO as it rightfully should be. You were buying a collector set. This is for the collector, for the person willing and able to spend the extra money. And for 200 bucks, I think you're rewarded pretty well here. As we transition into the build, you'll notice the display plaque, beautiful as always with these Lego Star Wars UCS sets. And it's got a hinge to it, so you can angle it differently. Don't really know why you would, but you can if you want. And then there's two spots for minifigs, so we can fit Luke Skywalker on the left and C-3PO on the right, or vice versa if you're so inclined. And I think they look pretty good on there. I think that it's a good spot for the figures. It is not a perfectly centered stand, I feel like. Like, it definitely feels like it's shifted more to the front of the ship. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I definitely think it has a good look to it now that it's, like, out from under this engine. But the only thing that really throws me off is I'm really used to 
the symmetrical look of Lego Star Wars stands. And this one kind of has like a bit of an L shape to it. Like it just comes down and then over, which is something I just don't think they've really done before. So it just kind of threw me off when I saw it for the first time, but I think in person it looks perfectly fine. One other thing about the stand for the land speeder is it holds it at a low flat angle, which is pretty abnormal. Most of the recent $200 UCS sets come in and they're like held up pretty high and they get tilted at a slight angle to make them look cool. Obviously, Luke's land speeder is a bit different in that way because it's a land speeder. It kind of glides across the desert really close to the ground and obviously pretty flat. And so they wanted to replicate that, I think, here. And they've done a good job with that. I think the vibe for the stand being flat and low to the ground is cool. It's something different than what we see with most of our sets, like with the UCS Y-Wing here. Like, obviously, it's a spaceship. It's flying around. So it should be up and at an angle looking like it's moving through the air. But I do like what they've done here. Just something to to spice it up. When it comes to taking the land speeder on and off of the stand, it's a pretty simple process. There's just a couple holes on the bottom that you use and line up with the bottom of the stand here, and you're just gonna pop it right on. Not a big deal. Unsurprisingly, the Luke's land speeder is a great representation of the source material with the beautiful darker red striping throughout, and of course, kind of the main color, the very light orange that they have for this is just stunning. We've got the repulsor vents front and center here they use kind of five very long tubes for lego that are you know they're malleable so you put them in straight and then you kind of bend them in and then there's five more on the other side here i just think that's a really solid look and something i'm very happy with the way it has turned out from the designers here and it kind of transitions nicely into the body of the ship with that sticker there maybe not the greatest transition but a better than nothing transition most certainly uh, we do have a small scratch on the very front of the hood for the land speeder so i think that's kind of cool to see just a little dirt and grime on there to show its imperfections because usually with a lot of lego sets i mean a lot of them just don't have that kind of detail so that's just something that i think is a little bit fun there kind of got the main red stripe down the center of the land speeder and that is going to lead us to this small exposed bit kind of like the engine or whatever there i think that's pretty nice uh, one bit that i don't love is this little tile just on the top here and obviously it needs to be there it's accurate but it is easy to kind of knock out of the way and kind of turn a little bit not a big deal like once you get it right it's going to be right as long as you don't knock into it but it's something that i've kind of struggled with a little bit uh, having had the set in hand now is just kind of knocking that out of place as i've moved it around and having to put it back so just something to be wary of the new windshield piece is stunning it's a new mold that they made just for luke's land speeder and i think it really well represents the windshield for the land speeder that we see in the film it's got a really nice cutout angle to it like i showed earlier it does come in its own bag so so you don't have to worry about getting scratched up and it I mean it looks beautiful without all the scratches that usually come on windshields and Lego Star Wars sets especially bigger windshield pieces like this for a UCS set you really want them to take care of them for you and they definitely have here inside the cockpit area there is a nice control panel as well as a kind of shifter knob and then we also have the steering column which actually can move up and down just a little bit I don't really know why you would be playing around with that and it's such a beautifully tiled off interior to that whole section i mean part of what made this set so fun for me to build is just all the details coming together like that i mean it's a really satisfying build and that can't be said of every lego star wars set. certainly they do their best with a lot of them to make them engaging and everything but this one i think is definitely one of the top tier sets as far as like the satisfaction you get while building it and then the seats of course are a beautiful design as well i think they look really good in the black tiling there looks just really sharp all the way up to the headrest and then behind there's kind of the open flat area where I guess R2 and C3PO would have sat in the movie, if uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, obviously, uh, you're not going to be able to do that with this non-minifig scale version. You'll have to buy the cheaper version that was out a couple years back. And then if we go to the engines, we've got a slew of details on these things. I mean, they look fantastic with the wiring, particularly on the exposed engine here. You can see the intake at the front is going to be actually the same for all three, regardless of whether or not the back end is exposed. And with these other two, that are kind of covered up and not broken down they are stickered over and they do have a kind of a nice uh continuous sticker you do have to you know watch where you're placing it so you get it as lined up as possible that is a problem if you're not careful you can end up with some wonky looking things but i generally did a uh, good job here to make it look as good as i could and then as we get to the back you'll notice that this is not something you're going to want to be grabbing at probably it seems like it's a a bit more loose than you may want but obviously to achieve the look, you sometimes have to give up a little bit of stability, which I think on a UCS 
set like this is actually a very good trade-off. Um, we can see some nice detail on the back and actually has a nice angle to it here instead of being just straight up and down. It's just slightly angled back and that piece is not all the way together. Now it is and it looks much better. As we get deep into the detail, you can just see how beautifully tiled off everything is. I mean, it's just gorgeous basically from any angle, surprisingly. I mean, I, I'm liking this set a lot more every time I look at it. I know it's Luke's land speeder. I know it gets all the memes for being the set that Lego makes too much, but like when it looks this good, I mean, there's you just can't say anything bad about it. I will say in case you're curious though, there is no hidden storage or anything under any of this. It is all just colorful inner workings of the land speeder and it is a very colorful build inside as you can see from the instruction manual there's just a lot going on in there but luckily you know it is a kind of a problem with some sets not a problem here as far as i can tell none of those colors are shining through so you don't have to worry about you know seeing a little bit of blue here or you know just a color that's not supposed to be there that can sometimes show through on some of these bigger sets just because they, you know, work in weird colors underneath. They've actually completely avoided that here as far as I can tell, which is great. I suppose if there's one place the design falls short, it's at the very front of the hood. On the top, you can see how flush it is with the other plates coming in, but on the bottom, there's a pretty substantial gap. And I looked at their pictures on the box and it's just like that, so it's not like I built it wrong. And then if you look at Luke's land speeder, like an actual picture of it, I guess. It doesn't have that kind of gap in separation. So that to me is maybe the biggest flaw with this set. You can call it nitpicking all you want. It's still a flaw with the set that that has got a bit of a gap there. So if that's a deal breaker to you, that's a deal breaker to you. I don't think it will be for many people, but it is something to be aware of. That's not really something that as far as I can tell, you can go in and fix. It's just a consequence of the design. But that to me is probably the only bad thing I really have to say about this set. I mean, it's just an annoying gap that shouldn't be there. Well, finally, after all these years, we can put the UCS Luke's land speeder behind us and Lego did it justice. It is a very good looking model, one that comes with an exclusive, at least at the time of release, C-3PO minifigure, along with the classic farm boy Luke. I just think if you like the way this ship looks, if you're a fan of the original trilogy, this is a very good UCS set. This is about as perfect of a design as they come. I mean, there really is, like I said, only one thing that I think is a slight minor flaw and everything else is just so fantastic about this set. So big props for the exclusive minifig and the nearly flawless design and I think a good value at 200 bucks. If you decide you want to pick one up, you can use the affiliate link in the description below. For me, this set is a 9.5 out of 10. It might not be my favorite Star Wars ship ever, but I can't deny it's a dang good Lego Star Wars UCS set by all other metrics. So let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you can check out more Lego Star Wars 2022 set reviews on the end screen now.